Hey Max, happy Sunday morning. Hope you guys are doing well today. Man, I really wish we could be together. I really miss hanging out with you guys in person. I miss being able to chat with you, play games with you. Um, so I hope you're doing all right. Know that your leaders and I are thinking of you guys, we're praying for you, and we really wish that we could be together. Um, but while we're still in lockdown, uh, in the meantime, I'm really enjoying playing games with you guys on Wednesdays. And I'm glad that we get to be, in some way, still journeying together through the book of Jonah. So we're going to keep doing that together this morning. You might remember we've been in Jonah, that Jonah has heard from God. He's been told by God to go and tell a message to the people of Nineveh, to a city which is his enemy. And Jonah's like, oh, no thanks, don't really want to do that. And he runs away. He gets caught in a storm. He gets rescued from that storm by God through a big fish that comes and swallows him. Jonah remembers that God has saved him. And we get to this point where Jonah gets spat back out onto dry land. And we're waiting to see whether the reminder that God has saved Jonah will make him more compassionate for these other people that God also wants to save. So that's where we're at in the story. Why don't you go grab your Bible? I'm going to read for us from Jonah chapter 3 as we continue on in this story. So here we go. We're in Jonah chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It says this. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now, Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On the first day, Jonah started into the city. He proclaimed, 40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. Now, guys, this is so similar to something that we have read before in Jonah, hey? Uh, you might notice, you might, it might sound familiar to you, because the start of Jonah, chapter 1, verse 1, says this. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amity. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. That's so similar to what we just read in, verse, in chapter 3, isn't it? It's like a new beginning. It's like the book starts all over again. It's a second chance for Jonah. The first time, God spoke to Jonah, and Jonah was like, nope, not going to do that. So what's going to happen this time? God speaks to Jonah again. What's his response going to be? Is he going to be disobedient, just like he was before? Or will he obey God? Well, our suspense, our anticipation uh, is resolved in verse 3. It says, Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord, and he went to Nineveh. Now, that seems like good news, right? It seems like, that, like Jonah is finally doing the thing that God has told him to do. But I want to suggest that maybe Jonah is kind of like only just obeying God, that he's only doing the bare minimum of what God has asked him to do. There's a couple of reasons why I think that. This passage tells us that Jonah is a big city, that it's huge, that it takes three days to cross it. To get to the heart of the city takes some time. It's a big place. This passage says that as Jonah gets to Nineveh, he just starts out. He's on his first day of the journey and he just starts to visit Nineveh. He's just started into the city. And that's when he proclaims his message. It's like he's just kind of dipped his toe into the water of Nineveh. He's just on the outskirts of this huge city. And that's the place that he chooses to spread, to share his message. But also, Jonah only just says a little bit. He just says a few words. Normally, when prophets in the Old Testament have a, a prophecy like this for a big city, they say something like, the God of Israel says, or the word of the Lord, the God of Israel says to you, they give some kind of authority to this message, some reason why people might listen to them. 
Jonah doesn't do that. Often, the prophets of the Old Testament will say why there's destruction coming on a city. The things that the people have done wrong, so they know what's, what's going wrong. They know what to fix. Normally, they say something like, repent or turn back to the God of Israel or recognize that the Lord is God. Jonah doesn't say anything like that. Normally, prophets go to the leaders of the people, to people who can spread the message, to people who will do something about it. Jonah doesn't go to the king of Nineveh. We'll learn next week that the king just hears about this from the people. Jonah doesn't do any of the normal things that help people to respond to God's word. He just barely steps inside the city. It's like he kind of whispers to someone on the outskirts the words that God has for him. It seems like God, that Jonah isn't really concerned whether people hear this message, whether they'll respond to it. Also, often prophets in the Old Testament will pray for the people that God has given a message like this to. They turn to God and say, really? Are you really going to destroy them? Please, will you show compassion? Will you intervene here? Will you do something different? Jonah doesn't do that. He doesn't pray for Nineveh. In fact, later we'll learn he almost does the opposite. I think Jonah is only just doing the bare minimum of obedience here. He's doing the things that God has told him to do. Go to Nineveh, spread and say these things to them. But he's not doing it in a way that they might actually know God, that they might actually repent and turn back to God. It's like if you just finished dinner and your dad said to you, hey, can you bring your plate to the kitchen? Well, we know that to mean is bring the stuff that you have with you, right, to the kitchen so that it can be cleaned. But it's like Jonah, instead of bringing his knife and fork and his cup with him, well, it's like he leaves his knife and fork on the table. It's like maybe he has some water left in his cup and he just pours that out onto the table and leaves the cup there. It's like he scrapes his leftovers just straight onto the table and then brings the bowl and nothing else over to the kitchen. Technically, he's done what he's asked to do, but it's not really the heart of the message, is it? If you've made more mess on the table, you're not helping to clean up. Jonah has told the people that God has a word for them but he's not really helping them to know God. Friends, this is a dark moment, I think, in the story of Jonah. Jonah's being obedient, kind of, but his heart feels so different to God's. If God wants to show grace and compassion to Nineveh, Jonah is not at all interested. He doesn't care about the people in the same way. We'll learn more of this story as things go on, uh, more about Jonah, more about what happens to Nineveh. I think the story gets a little bit better next week, and we'll see what happens after that. Um, but I think this raises some interesting questions for us. We too are people who are saved by God, who have been given grace and brought into a relationship with God. Do we care that other people also get to share in that grace? Do we want other people to know about it? We're people who have been disobedient. There's a bunch of times where we fail to do what God asks us to do, just like when Jonah runs away from God. But when we get given a second chance, because God always gives us a second chance, do we want to be obedient? Do you want to keep running away? Or do you want to turn to God? and try and do the things that he's calling us to do, uh, that he helps us to do. And then, as we're trying to be obedient to God, are we just kind of ticking things off the list? Are we just doing them so that we get the brownie points, or so that it technically looks like we're doing the things that God calls us to do? Or is our heart aligned with God's? Do we care about the things that God cares about? 
Are we just doing the things? Are we just going through the motions? Or are our hearts being transformed so that we are obedient to God because we also care about the things that God cares about? Friends, these are big questions. So let me invite you to have a chat with the people in your bubble. I'll put some questions up on the screen. Chat with your family. Let us understand more of what's going on in this passage and have a think together about what it looks like for our lives. Guys, I'll see you again for game time on Wednesday. Bye for now.